I have the privilege of introducing you to the next speaker for our Lightning Talk series. I'm delighted to introduce Scarlett Hartsman, a brilliant lover of rockets, all things space, and a future on Mars. Scarlett single-handedly started a rocket club at her school and has connected with mentors from across the space sector from Rachel Tillman to planetary scientist Pascal Lee, who she will be working with this summer. Let's welcome her and her vision of a human presence on Mars. I also just want to point out that she has excellent fashion sense, and you'll see why in a moment. Welcome, Scarlett. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. I'm not planning on being the first person to step foot on Mars, but at 16 years old, it's quite possible I could be. Hi, my name is Scarlett Hartsman, and my passion for space has already brought me to places I never expected, like NASA JPL, a rocket launch, this year's Humans to Mars Summit, and who knows, maybe one day to Mars. But my fascination with space didn't just appear. It grew and evolved over time but I think I can pinpoint where and when it all began. I was eight years old, and my second grade teacher had just assigned us to do a project on a famous woman for Women's History Month. Sitting on my leather couch with a sheet of paper in front of me, I read through the names of some of the most prominent female figures throughout the last century. Michelle Obama, Serena Williams, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, and so on. Going through the list, I happened upon one name that stood out to me. Sally Ride. I had no idea who she was, and that's what intrigued me. Throughout the completion of the project, I saw all she had accomplished, and it blew my young mind. I loved learning about her first flight into space, where she operated the mission's robotic space arm, performed experiments, and went on spacewalks. She had broken the gender barrier and revolutionized the possibilities for women in the space industry. This new knowledge planted a seed that would continue to grow throughout elementary and middle school experiences and brings me to where I am now as a sophomore in high school. But let's back up a bit to when I'm 11 years old in fifth grade. At that time, I was lucky enough to take a trip to Pasadena, California, home to the one and only NASA JPL. During this trip, I was able to get a private tour of the buildings and was even able to see the Perseverance rover being built in real time. And that's me in the Mars yard with a replica of the, of the Curiosity rover in the background. Very, very cool. The tour was fantastic, and talking to NASA scientists was even better. Going into some of the offices, I was welcomed as a young mind and encouraged by the scientists to continue my pursuit to NASA. It was a beyond incredible experience, and I could feel my love and interest in aerospace continue to grow. Fast forward a bit, and eighth grade is coming to an end. I started to think about my options for high school. Around the same time, my dad showed me the videos from the 2022 Humans to Mars Summit. One speaker I watched was Gitika Gorthy who performed an amazing speech about her accomplishments as the founder and CEO of Ignited Thinkers, a nonprofit organization used to encourage students to pursue a career in aerospace. She started the organization around my age at the time, 14, and it made me realize that even though I'm very young, I can still make a difference. After being able to email and meet with her over Zoom, she offered me lots of guidance, and I decided to start a model rocketry club at my high school as an incoming freshman. In it, I was able to build and launch model rockets amongst peers, as you can see there, and get into contact with prominent figures in the space industry, such as Rachel Tillman from the Viking Mars Mission Education and Preservation Project, and Janet Ivey, the Explore Mars Director of Education. Both have inspired and promoted my interests in this field, and I'm so grateful that these esteemed experts gave their time to speak with my club as they have especially fueled my passion. A few months later, at the beginning of August 2023, I witnessed my very first real rocket launch. I had participated in the Stories of Space project started by Beth Mund a few months prior, where I wrote a two-page essay on my interests in space. 
This essay, along with hundreds of others, were put on dozens of micro SD cards, which were put on an Antares supply rocket and sent to the ISS. Its mission was to test the effects of solar radiation on data storage hardware. The launch was at NASA Wallops, and it was spectacular. The best description I have for it was that it looked like watching a sunrise, but at 8.31 p.m. It was extraordinary to see and even more surreal, as I recalled that a little part of me was on that rocket. The SD cards actually just returned from the ISS, and results should be announced soon. Now, as a sophomore at New Rochelle High School, I'm a part of my school's science research program. In this program, students complete science projects with mentors and present them at science fairs. With the help of Rachel Tillman, I secured a mentorship with Dr. Pascal Lee. Dr. Lee is the co-founder and chairman of the Mars Institute, a planetary scientist at the SETI Institute, and the principal investigator of the Houghton Mars Project at NASA Ames Research Center. I must say, I think I'm in very good hands. When it comes to Mars, there's one spectacular thing that we would love to find, life. And the best way to find it is with people rather than robots. But where do we go to find it? How will we get there? And what will we do once we're there? Well, there's one specific place in the middle of the action, Noctis Labyrinth. Dr. Lee has proposed this area as a possible landing site for future manned missions because it is close to volcanoes and caves, the best area for life to exist due to its warmer conditions. Places that current rovers would not be able to explore. This summer, I will be analyzing possible traverse paths to take not ro rovers, but humans, all around this area. However, unable to wait for the summer, I've already begun mapping out these paths using the Mars Quick Map site that takes us to the recently discovered volcano in Noctis Labyrinth, as well as Valles Marineris, an ancient glacier, and possibly all the way to the most well-known volcano on Mars, Olympus Mons. I plan to evaluate the slopes, elevation, and roughness of the terrain when mapping out these paths. Paying attention to those details is crucial for handling the Martian environment. We must understand what the maximum slope we need to handle is, the degree of roughness of the terrain, and the certain elevations we'll be moving through ahead of time. Once we have that information, we can leave the rest to the engineers. My project is critical, as it will plan ahead for possible future missions and map out the routes in which humans may one day walk on Mars. It could be me, it could be one of my peers, it could even be someone who's currently in second grade doing a school project on a famous astronaut. But I hope if I do step foot on Mars or help others find their path there, that like the figures in my life did, Sally Ride, Gitta Gorthy, Rachel Tillman, Janet Ivey, and Beth Mund, I too can inspire another curious kid to dream big and reach for the stars. Thank you.